Great to have you here. Great so, to be here. How do you think tourism plays a role in ending the wildlife crime? So if we're going to end up wildlife crime, we need to have not only government, we need private sector, non-government sector all on board. Um, I'm really excited about the travel and tourism sector coming on board in the fight against illegal wildlife trade. I think they are the private sector entity we need with us. Why? Well, travel and tourism can protect wildlife at source. So if you have good wildlife-based tourism employing local people, they have an incentive then to protect the wildlife. The people will protect the wildlife because it's generating wealth and their employment. So that's what we want to see. But what we don't want to see is wildlife-based tourism where the international comes in, doesn't employ locally, and strips out all the resource. Because if that's the case, they are no better than a poacher or a smuggler. They are stealing local resources for their own benefit. So what we want to see responsible, sustainable wildlife-based tourism that is protecting wildlife in source by generating local wealth and local employment. Nice. And with this, we can, it can be a game changer. The other thing is, and we've just heard today, that there are a billion people traveling around the world. We can reach a billion people around the world with a message about combating illegal wildlife trade. Make them responsible consumers. Build a constituency around wildlife. And we heard from Trip, they have 300 million Chinese that are part of their platform. They're going to reach all 300 million people in one swoop. How good is that? That's going to have a huge impact. We're scaling up this fight. I see. So with all of these travelers, how would you like to change the behavior of tourism? And not only that, but the tourism industry. So there's a couple of things. I think uh, what we've seen from the World Travel and Tourism Council is outstanding. I had a chance to speak to them in 2016. Within 12 months, they had adopted a declaration called the Buenos Aires Declaration saying, this is what we commit to do as an industry to stop illegal wildlife trade. Six months later, they've got 100 plus CEOs signing up to this declaration, which says they're going to have a zero tolerance attitude towards illegal wild and wildlife trade. They're going to inform their customers, their travelers, not to buy illegally sourced wild, wildlife products. They are going to, when they are investing locally in a country in wildlife-based tourism, they've made a commitment to engage with the local community and to provide decent jobs to local community members. This is fantastic. This is what we want to see. Now, if this can get rolled out, not only does it help us combat illegal wildlife trade, but it helps protect wildlife from other threats, from habitat loss, because the land has value for wildlife-based tourism. It's not going to be taken for agriculture. It helps deal with animal-wildlife conflict and more. So for me, the sector we want is travel and tourism. They are on board and they're going to have a game-changing impact here. That's great. So tell us about the work that's been done in Rwanda and how do you think that is a sort of a perfect model for sustainable tourism? So um, this is where I'm going to do a bit of an advertisement for African Parks. I'm Special Envoy for African Parks. Um, we are working with President Kagame, the President of Rwanda. He asked African Parks to come in just about 10 years ago and said, would you manage on behalf of the government of Rwanda, Akagera Park? It's a national park. What had happened, it was overrun with cattle. It was full of snares. Most of the animals were gone. The boundaries were not being respected. We've been there now 10 years. And in that period of time, we've taken away the snares, the cattle are gone, we've brought back all big five, animals are there, it's flourishing with wildlife, and we've brought in tourism. We've created the conditions, it's now a secure place with wildlife, secure for people and wildlife. The tourism venture is coming. And you know what happened last year? Last year we had 37,000 tourists, seven years ago there were zero. 37,000 tourists, half of them are Rwandan, half of them international very important, local and international, and they generated enough revenue to pay for 75% of the running cost of that park. It has gone from a park that had lost its animals, there was no respect for the park boundaries, to a beautiful park, big five, beautiful landscapes, fantastic wildlife-based tourism, employing people, and Rwandans want to go there, not just the internationals. Fantastic. That's great. So you're bringing back the ecosystem and creating new jobs. Exactly. We have restored the landscape, we have brought back the wildlife, and with that we've brought security, and with that we've brought investment. But you know what started it? The political will of President Kagame. He wanted that area to be rehabilitated. He wanted it to be something different from what it was. He brought us in because he knows we could do it, and we did it, and so now we've got flourishing wildlife, local people being employed, and a fantastic wildlife-based tourism facility. Well, John, it's been a pleasure Eddie, having you here. Likewise, thanks very much.